Hi guys, today we are going to discuss about biogenic liver abscess. Let's get started. Talking about the etiology of biogenic liver abscess, the infection to the liver can enter through two routes. One of them is portal vein. The second one is bile duct. And the third route is through hepatic artery. In this figure, you can see the portal vein posteriorly, bile duct anteriorly and to the uh, right and hepatic artery towards the middle and anterior. So talking about the sources of infection or the route of infection, the first and commonest one is biliary tract. What happens is the biliary tract gets obstructed due to bile duct stones or tumors. So the bile inside the bile duct gets static and is a suitable medium for infection. The bacteria and necrotic tissue sets in, resulting into septic emboli. The septic emboli will attack the liver thus causing multiple liver abscesses. This process is known as ascending cholangitis. The process of setting in of infection inside the bile duct uh, due to bile duct obstruction is known as ascending cholangitis. Biliary tract is the commonest of all sores. The second one is portal vein. Here we have portal vein which is formed due to the union of tributary spinelic vein and iliocolic vein which give rise to the superior mesenteric vein along with the tributaries. Here we have a mosaic appendix which if get inflamed will result into appendicitis thus the uh, the complicated kind of appendicitis will, re will result into thrombophilitis of iliocolic vein the thrombophilitis of iliocolic vein will cause septic emboli formation in the superior mesenteric vein in turn, it gets transmitted upwards towards the portal vein, causing portal pyemia. The portal pyemia then attacks the liver, causing multiple liver abscesses. The third cause for the source of infection is arterial cause or hematogenous cause for abscesses. The reason for hematogenous cause is hepatic artery. It can be due to tonsillitis, bacterial endocarditis, IV drug abuse, and osteomyelitis. The last is idiopathic cause. The predisposing factors for Pyogenic liver abscess is immunocompromised patient and already existing lesions. Diabetes mellitus, leukemia, chronic illness, elderly alcoholics, transplanted patients. For already existing lesion, we have hydratis cyst, amoebic abscess and hematoma that can act as pre predisposing factors. For causative organisms, we have different types of causative organisms for different route of infection. For bile duct, we have E. coli and other gram-native organisms like Clepsila and Proteus. For portal vein, we have Streptococci and anaerobes. 
For hepatic artery, we have Staphylococcus aureus. Talking about the complications, there is direct extension of the abscess. From liver, it can go to the pleura, causing empyema. It can go to the pericardium. It can go to the lung, causing other lung abscesses. It can go to the peritoneum, causing peritonitis. Talking about the clinical features, general manifestations like fever, headache, malaise, anorexia, right hypochondrial or lower chest pain, abdominal examination reveals tender hepatomegaly which can reveal as abdominal guarding or rebound tenderness. Patient may present with pyrexia of unknown origin. Picture of causating lesion may present. For example, in case of cholangitis, it can present as charcotroid. Charcotroid is tried of pain, jaundice, and fever and rigor. In case of appendicitis, there is presence of migratory pain in the right iliac fissure. Talking about investigations, we have labs, imaging. In labs, we have leukocytosis. We find anemia and high ESR. Performing liver function test, there is low serum albumin. There is high alkaline phosphatase and high transaminase level. Elevated serum bilirubin is present in cases of cholangitis and multiple abscesses. CT and ultrasound can be performed for imaging and even chest x-ray can be performed for Confirmation, we can do aspiration for culture and sensitivity. This is ultrasound. The first one is the initial ultrasound of initial stage, which will, which, which, where you can see the debris inside the abscess cavity. The second one is the late stage where you, you can clearly see the liquefied pus inside the abscess cavity. Here you can see the low density lesions containing ecogenic material which is pus and necrotic tissue. In CT scan we have two main signs that you can identify in case of pyogenic liver abscess. One of them is double target sign in which there is central low attenuation lesion which is surrounded by a high attenuation inner rim and a low attenuation outer rim we have a lesion we have abscess cavity inside which is very, which is low attenuation lesion and outside we have two rims the inner rim is surrounded by high attenuation structure and the lower rim is formed of low attenuation structure. The second sign is cluster sign, which is aggregation of multiple low attenuation liver lesions in a localized area to form a single lesion. This is a pyogenic liver abscess in the right lobe of the liver which shows hypodense rim secondary to peripheral inflammation. This is a low attenuation of the liver. Here we have a CT scan showing the rim, inner rim and the outer rim. The inner rim is a high attenuating and the outer rim is low attenuating. 
this is called double target sign here we have the cluster signs where there is multiple aggregation of cystic cavities this is a CT scan the first one is arter arterial phase CCT and the second is portal phase portal venous phase CT here you can see the hypodense cystic lesions showing aggregations which is known as cluster sign in the portal venous cells we can see the enhancement of irregular septa within the abscess cavity so talking about the approach of the pyogenic liver abscess if we suspect pyogenic liver abscess the first thing we got to do is we got to perform ultrasound or ct scan the second step we're going to do is we're going to send the blood and aspirate for the culture the third thing we're going to do is we're going to send serum igg or igm elijah for intramorbid histolytica test First thing we're going to do is start empirical antibiotics. So, what are the treatment modalities for pyogenic liver abscess? We have mainly three treatment modalities. Number one is broad spectrum antibiotics. The second one is percutaneous guided drainage of pus. And number three is open or laparoscopic drainage which is nearly replaced these days by percutaneous drainage. So talking about broad spectrum antibiotics, the first line of antibiotics is penicillin, aminoglycoside, and metodontiazol, or cephalosporin, cephalosporin, and metodontiazol. Empirical Antibiotic therapy is used initially, but later on, it is replaced or it is changed according to the results of culture and sensitivity. Talking about percutaneous guided drainage of abscess, it should it is very simple, and it should be always it should always be guided. We should not perform percutaneous drainage of abscess without guidance of ultrasound or CT. So we can use ultrasound or CT for the guidance to direct needle towards the abscess cavity. We aspirate the abscess. Then a tube is drained, is inserted. Here you can see a doctor performing the percutaneous drainage procedure of a liver abscess. You can see here the ultrasound picture of the liver abscess. The doctor is injecting some saline. Here you can see the needle passing into the abscess in the ultrasound picture. You can see the pus over here. The doctor is inserting the catheter through the guide wire. You can see here how the doctor is inserting the pictal catheter through the guide wire. This is the pus which is aspirated. Thank you, thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe.